I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Now we will finish chapter 20 of Ezekiel. We pick this up in verse 27. Remember, the first half of this chapter was a history lesson ex describing the const near constant rebellion of Israel from the days of Egypt when Moses led them out up to the time of Ezekiel. I also want to mention that this video does have a Joseph Smith translation in it. What the Joseph Smith translation is, this is an inspired translation or correction of the Bible done by Joseph Smith to restore those passages that had been lost over the years. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. Here also they made their sweet savor, and poured out their, their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. This is God telling the people living in the days of Ezekiel that if they keep doing what their fathers have done, then they are just as polluted as their fathers. They can't, they, they, they can't think that they can get away with it. Their fathers didn't get away with it. They can't either. And when it says here, that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that your ideas are not going to do you any good. That's what it's talking about. You may think you're justifying yourself, but you're not. Verse 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bound of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me. But pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain... In the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord." when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. This is an interesting description of the gathering of Israel. Eventually they'll be gathered out of all nations. And he says here, uh, this, is, this is the most interesting. Says, Go ye, serve ye everyone his idols, but pollute me, but pollute my holy name no more. 
What he's saying is, yes, he's going to gather Israel. They are going to repent. But they are not going to be forced to worship God. But if they're not going to worship God, they are not going to be allowed back into the land of Canaan, the land of Israel. That land is for only for those who will worship the true God. If you don't want to worship God, that's fine. You just stay where you're at and you can, you can have whatever religion you want. But don't come to my land. Don't come to my holy mountain, to my temple, and pollute it by worshiping other gods. Let us finish this out. Verse 45. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the south field. And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, Doth he not speak parables? Now this says the... uh, in the footnotes, it says that the of the south field, the forest of the south field, says, or of the Negev. I know that's a region in Israel. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it, it's an odd prophecy. Going to burn the forest down, apparently. I don't. I honestly don't know what this is talking about. But I like Ezekiel's ending there. His last statement: "They say of me, doth he not speak parables?" In other words, nothing he says is literal. It's just a a good lesson. It's what people in the modern day say about the Bible. It's not real history. It's just parables. It's metaphors. It's allegories. It didn't really happen. And here we have Ezekiel complaining that the Jews of his day are making the same claim of his words, that his words aren't real. They're not really going to happen. They're just parables. They're just allegories. They're just metaphors. We don't need to worry about them actually happening. Now, before I sign off, there is... A Joseph Smith translation here. In verse 30, in the King James, it says, Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? Joseph Smith corrects this. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye are polluted after the manner of your fathers, and ye commit whoredom after their abominations. Now that's interesting. We have a juxtaposition of words here. In the King James says, Are ye polluted? And in the Joseph Smith it's, Ye are polluted. And then it's, And commit ye whoredoms. Joseph Smith corrects it to, And ye commit whoredoms. This subtle change, this is a a subtle change of grammar that changes this from questions, instead of God saying, Are ye polluted? Are you? No, God, this is a declaration. God saying, Yes, you are polluted just like your fathers were. It's a subtle, as I say, a subtle change in grammar but profound difference in meaning. But we leave that here, and we will pick this up in chapter 21. I believe we have three more chapters left in Ezekiel before we turn back to Jeremiah. So we'll see you there.